Hi, I'm Ron Montez, and we're going to be doing Latin body action, sometimes referred to as Cuban motion, for all the dances, including swing. Hi, now we're going to work on basic Cuban motion to be used in all directions, forward, back, and to the side. Uh, we'll be doing a couple of simple patterns. This uh, video is not designed to teach you a bunch of steps because we have many other videos to do that purpose. But this is to increase the body action in those dances. If you have the correct body action, the dance is going to look better, it's going to feel better, and you're going to tie it together with your leads to uh, match your partner to a greater extent. So right now we're going to take a couple exercises to improve your Latin body action or Cuban motion. What I want you to do now is take three steps side close side to either direction. I'll go to my left right now side, close, side. And the other direction, side, close, side. Now I want you to think of the third step, one, two, three, and then I want your hip to go over and finish to the left, over your left foot. So this is extended a bit from the rest of the body. The other direction, one, two, three, and rest on that hip to the right, four. So, simple, we'll try that again. To start out with, we don't worry about steps one, two. One, two. We take step three, a little bit more gradually, and then we allow the hip to finish over there by count four, but not on count three. I'll do it incorrectly. One, two, three. So you can see it's over there too quickly, and it's uh, rather abrupt. So we're gonna go to the left again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, if we examine our finishing position, we'll see that we have a straight standing leg, this one, straight, and that we have a bent non-supporting leg, the left one in this case. We've rolled from the foot outside to inside, and now the big toe is in contact with the floor. If I turn to face you, that finishing position, which will be happening many, many times, is like so. Standing leg straight, non-supporting leg bent, roll to the big toe. Now, this leg that's bending, this one here that's bending, the knee veers inwards towards the supporting leg a little bit to assist in rotation. So, when we pull the leg straight finally, we think of something being in our pocket and we pull the pocket back. So if we move to the other side, we transfer weight, we straighten the leg, and that hip bone moves backwards. So this is our finishing position. Now you've heard about uh, the position of the feet in Latin being slightly turned out. Well, that's true. We don't want our feet completely lined up parallel like this we do in foxtrot and waltz, etc. We want this spacing a little bit, V-shape if you will, toes going out just a little bit. Why? Why do you think we do this? Well, there are a couple of good reasons. Some people say it assists in the balance, overall balance while you stand, and that's probably true. Uh, turning out of the foot a little bit assists you in your balance. Secondary, the turning out of the foot enables the hip to turn out also. So without a turned in foot, and I want you to practice something and you'll see how really awkward this is. I want you to put your feet together, toes and heels, and then try to rotate your hips. And you'll find that it's not comfortable. Now the extreme wrong example would be toes together, snowplow version here, right? Like this. And now try to rotate your hips. In fact, it is even painful. So that's the reason for the turned out foot, enable hip rotation. Good, okay, so we're gonna do our three step action again. To the left, concentrating on the finishing position and the four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So the four is delayed. And again, one, two, three, 
four. One, two, three, four. Okay, now, when we have our weight split evenly between the feet and we decide to shift it over, in Latin dance, we want to push off to achieve the weight transfer, then bend the knee. So let's talk about that again. Both feet are flat, feet are apart. If we want to go to the left, we push off the right foot. Push off the floor, transfers the weight, bend the knee, kicks in the hip and body action. So you can see how that works. We don't do this. We have an active pressure off of the floor. Kind of like you do when you wanted to jump. If you wanted to jump, you would up off the floor, up through, finally the big toe provides the last push off. The strong part of the foot is the ball, inside edge of ball of the foot. And that's what we use to push off of to the side. So we're gonna utilize that on three, four. One, two, split weight, three, push off, relax, four. One, two, split weight, three, push off the left, relax and settle. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, I, on purpose, I didn't talk about one, two. One, two, we're stepping, we're changing knees, and gradually shifting. So, if you've ever climbed steps, you know that you take a step up to the step. Then you put your posture forward over the foot so you don't fall backwards because you have excellent posture when you're climbing steps. And then you push off that leg up to take the next step. And notice when you're walking up steps, you cannot do this. You have to do this and this. So to an extent, we do the same thing sideways. We take our side step on the inside edge or ball of foot. Then we put the heel down and then we straighten the knee. Then we put the toe drop the heel, then straighten the knee. And of course this happens on three, four. So we're doing it this way too. Ball flat, ball flat, ball flat, toe. Ball flat, ball flat, ball flat, toe. Now I wanna add something to this, a turn. We're gonna do a turn. One, two, three, finish four. So one and two, we don't have to worry about any body action at all because our legs are straighter and we're ha not having mo motion there. But three, four, we definitely do. So we're gonna turn, step, finish. Turn, step, finish. One, two, three, finish four. One, two, three, finish four, one. Okay, I talked about the finishing position in the leg and the hip, but I didn't mention too much about the rib cage. The rib cage is an area where I want to focus on for a couple of minutes. And now continuing with our basic Cuban motion improvement, we're gonna use a chair, because as you remember, I just mentioned the rib cage, which we haven't talked about yet. This is a big, important area for the men particularly. Of course, the ladies as well, but men, this is uh, very important for you to develop. So you've you know that you use your hips and your knees. But there's also the use of the rib cage that precedes the action of the hip. The hip kind of follows the rib cage from side to side. This initiates the movement of the body to the side, followed by the leg straightening, the hip finishing. This initiates, this precedes everything. Rib cage to the right, like someone's pulling me that direction. Then I say, okay, I'll go. I transfer weight. And then this finishes here. So upper body to hip. Upper body to hip. So we're gonna talk about this area. And if you use a chair, it's gonna be helpful in developing the rib cage. So if you sit in a chair, you keep your posture forward. Don't sit back into the chair. Keep your uh, back up and you move your rib cage from side to side, you're gonna find that nothing else moves because it can't. It's 
stationary against the chair. So we're able to isolate the movement of our rib cage quite freely. We can also do an arch by pushing a rib cage bones forward and a contraction by squeezing and closing our belly button. Four basic areas, arch, contract, left and right. Now, if you can get a, a good feel for those areas, arch, rib cage forward, contract, tummy closed. Arch, rib cage forward, contract, tummy closed. Side to side. The next movement would be forward arch to the right, to the contraction, to the left, to forward. Reverse it. Forward arch, left, back, right. Forward, left, back, right. Very good exercise. In a chair, it's easier, of course. You can hold on to the chair. You can stabilize yourself and make it work very good. You can put your arms free or hold on. This helps you to do the movement. I'll do it standing in a minute also. But now we have arch center. Center is a toned position that controls our posture. Center. Contract center. Arch center. Contract center. Left and right with a centering movement also. And I'll leave the chair for momentarily Stand up and we'll do it like this. So you're going to have an arch, weight is quite forward, a contract, weight goes to your heels, a side and a side. Arch, contract, side, side. Arch, contract, side, side. If you're really good, you can do the circle, although that takes a little practice. Arch forward and go around the clock. Back to 12 o'clock, reverse it to 12 o'clock, reverse it, to 12 o'clock, reverse it, to 12 o'clock. Now in order to achieve the motion we use in the dances, rhythm dances in Latin, you need a certain amount of flexibility in the body. And I don't mean flexibility like do the splits. I mean flexibility to stretch a little bit internally between your ribcage and your hips, this area here. It has to be free and mobile. Some people have that a little bit more naturally than others, and some are very tight in this area. So we need to loosen that up with a few little exercises. So if you want to, you could take your partner, who's seated here, myself, who's seated here, face one another with joined hands, and work off each other. So in effect, she's mimicking my movements, I'm mimicking hers and we're together as a couple. Another idea is to take your partner in dance position and do the movements together. If I'm moving side to side, she's doing it from the rib cage, like so. So we're not worried about legs and hips and all that stuff at the moment. We're working on the rib cage. Another way to uh, stretch this area out is in a doorway. You know, you go to a door frame, put your hands against the door frame, split your feet for balance, hold it this way or this way, it doesn't matter, and move your rib cage from side to side, stretching it. Now, I know you go in for your lessons or practice or wherever you are. If you hear the music, try to move the rib cage to the music. Let's say, for instance, rumba. And I'm sitting down, patiently waiting, and I go slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick. My rib cage is moving side to side, side to side to side to side to side to side with the rhythm of the music. Slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick. Right, so we can use that. Now we're going to work with another little prop. Remember we've used props, the chair, previously. Now we're going to use this item here, which you very well know as a hula hoop. But we're not going to be doing the hula with this hoop. We're going to be using it to assist our posture 
in the Latin dances and the rhythm dances, the posture. Now, your teachers have told you, and you know, that there's a specific posture related to Latin dance, and that is pitched forward slightly with the upper, upper body, tummy tucked into yourself, and forward, forward. Definitely the opposite of that, and the wrong way is to sink back, tummy sticking forward, chest caved in. Really want to tone up, put your tummy under your rib cage, and project your upper body forward to your partner. To test that, it's good if you can take your hands and put them forward to your partner and lean a little bit forward this way. Hands, elbows, arms, forward, tummy away. That's one way to look at it. To assist in that, we can use this hula hoop. We can put it around us, put it across our back, just under the shoulder blades, as you can see here. Take our arms and form this circle, which is a beautiful example of a forward and circular position. Forward and circular. So if I hold on to this hoop and push, it takes my upper body forward. If I keep pulling strong enough, it pitches my weight forward. So that's the whole idea, is we're taking it, anchoring it under the shoulder blades, arms forward in a circle, pushing with the hands that takes the upper body forward. And you can see what it does. If I push my hands forward, the hoop connects with my back, connects with my back, and takes me forward. Now, this is very good for positioning yourself in the posture for the Latin dancing. So if we do any of our steps, and we anchor this, push it forward, keeps our tummy back, we can do any step, we can turn, side steps that we practiced, side steps that we practiced, etc. So you see how this can be very useful. Now we're going to take a couple of steps, specific steps to practice our Cuban motion. The first one is side close side, we've already done. The second one I call the never ending box. The box step you know is, we'll start forward, forward, side, close, back, side, close. That's the box step normal, different angle. Forward, side, close, back, side, close. Never ending box is forward and hold it, change weight three times. Side, three weight changes. Close, three weight changes. Back, three weight changes. Side, three weight changes. And close, three weight changes. So that's a little tricky now. It's a never ending box because it takes a long time to complete one box step. But it is really excellent for practicing your action. Then you don't have to think so much about the pattern. So you're going to go slow, 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 side slow, replace slow, replace slow, close slow, close slow, close slow, go back slow, forward slow, back slow, side slow, replace side, slow, and slow, slow, slow. Excellent pattern to kind of rehearse and practice in a repetitive form the action required for the box step. Now we speed it up a little bit and do it more or less in all quicks. And we have quick, 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 and quick, quick, quick. Let's count how many steps that is. One, two, three on the rock. Four, five, six, side right. Seven, eight, nine in place. 10, 11, 12 back. 13, 14, 15 apart. 16, 17, 18. You have 18 chances to get it right. 
So let's try to increase the number of correct actions. All righty, very good. So that's an excellent one to do. Another one is a stair step. Stair step. We have forward, side break to the right, forward, side break to the left, forward, side break to the right, forward, side break to the left, back, side break to the right, back, side break to the left, back, and so forth. So you can see how it looks like a stair zigzag pattern. Also can be done in cha-cha. So if we did like this, start with a back basic. Two, three forward lock, cha cha cha. Two, three forward lock, cha cha cha. Two, three forward lock, cha cha cha. Two, three back lock, cha cha cha. Side two, three back lock, cha cha cha. The lock can be replaced with a run. Two, three, cha cha cha. Two, three, cha cha cha. Two, three, reverse, cha cha cha. Two, three, cha cha cha. That's your stair step, your never ending box, and of course the step we did before, which was side, close, side, finish, side, close, side, finish. Okay, now let's talk about the foot a little more specifically the foot. If you put your foot in front of you, heel to the middle of the foot and separate. Then you have a classic position that's used in your Latin dance. This is where your forward and back steps come from. We can change weight and practice that position. Let's switch our feet and make kind of a slanted T, open that T, anchor the feet and rock. And there we have classic position of the feet. And now we're pretty much finished with our hoop and we can continue.